Hi, and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by the stopping distance of a vehicle. You should then be able to estimate how the distance for a vehicle to make an emergency stop varies with speed. And finally, you should be able to describe the factors that can affect the thinking distance and the braking distance. Okay, now a key issue when driving a car is how quickly it can stop in an emergency. I'm showing you here a car driving along a road. Imagine that the driver of the car spots an obstruction, for example a child. The driver will apply a force to the brake and come to a stop. The stopping distance is the total distance travelled from when the driver first spots the obstruction to when the car stops. Now we can divide the stopping distance into two parts. The thinking distance is the distance travelled by the car during the driver's reaction time. The reaction time is the time taken for the driver to spot the obstruction, make a decision and then move their foot to the brake. The braking distance is the distance the car travels from when the driver applies the brakes to when the car stops. So as you can see, both the thinking distance and the braking distance together make up the stopping distance. Now there is one key idea here. The greater the speed of the vehicle, the greater the stopping distance, assuming that the same braking force is applied. I'm showing you here how the stopping distance varies with speed for a typical family car. Now a common speed limit in the UK is 30 miles per hour. At this speed, a typical family car takes around 23 metres to stop. That's the equivalent of six car lengths. As we said before, the thinking distance is the distance travelled by the car during the driver's reaction time. So we're going to look at that now. The reaction time varies from person to person and a typical range is between 0.2 seconds and 0.9 seconds. We can measure a person's reaction time by using a ruler. One person holds the ruler and a volunteer places their fingers on either side. The ruler is then dropped and the volunteer has to catch it. The further the ruler falls before it's caught, the longer the reaction time. By measuring the distance that the ruler fell, we can look the reaction time up in a table. Now it's really important that a driver has the shortest possible reaction time. In other words, they can react very quickly, for example if they see an obstruction. A tired driver will have a longer reaction time than one who's alert. Alcohol and certain drugs can also make the reaction time longer. And finally, distractions in the car, such as a mobile phone, will also increase the driver's reaction time. So, because these factors all increase the reaction time, they also increase the thinking distance. Now, the braking distance can also be affected by certain factors. Wet or icy conditions reduce the friction between the tyres and the road and increase the braking distance. The braking distance will also increase if a car has worn tyres, and again, that's because this reduces the friction between the tyres and the road. Finally, worn brakes also increase the braking distance. We're going to be looking at brakes in the next video. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on stopping distance in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.